Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's session. Tonight we have a new webinar, and I'm glad to share with you all these teaching experiences. Tonight the focus is on Cambridge TKT Module 3. My name is Mr. Juan Valenzuela, and tonight we will be sharing these methodologies, these strategies, these techniques that are so helpful when teaching English to people of different ages and different levels. Before we start, I want to know where you are connecting from. Can you please type in the chat box the name of the city where you are connecting from? I know there are people from Chota tonight, Cajamarca, Chiclayo, good, Cajamarca, present, all right. Thanks, thanks for being here. All right, good. San Ignacio, good. So we are connecting from many different places. So good, all right. Arequipa, present. All right, Chiclayo, good. All right, welcome everyone, welcome. First of all, I want to tell you why we are running these webinars. Not only tonight's webinar, but you know, we've been offering a number of webinars these months since the, the quarantine started, we have been offering these teaching opportunities, these online opportunities for professional development. Why am I doing this? You know, right now we are facing one of the most challenging experiences of our lifetimes and this becomes a chance, this be becomes a fantastic opportunity to make connections connections with our relatives, connections with our students and our colleagues, as well as to grow up both personally and professionally. These days have been good for sharing more time with the family, for reflecting on the way we have been doing things perhaps. So this webinar is also a great chance to continue making connections, not only with people, outside, but also this is a good chance to make inner connections, to connect with ourselves, to know how well we are doing our work. You know, we are teachers and we have a special vocation which demands constant training and constant learning. Since we work with humans, we, we don't work with machines, we work with people and people uh, have different qualities, special qualities that need to be met, different necessities that need to be met by, uh, by us, the teachers. We are teachers and we are psychologists, we are administrators, we are architects, we are doctors, we are parents, we are friends, we are many things in the classroom. So our role is crucial um, you know, we behave in different ways, not only in class, but also when the class is over, we behave sometimes as psychologists, doctors, parents, friends, etc. We are educators and we need to be well instructed to instruct others. All right, let's start then right away. Tonight, the focus, as I said at the beginning, is on Cambridge TKT Module 3. All right. Jose Gerson, thanks for connecting from Motupe. So Motupe, present tonight. Let's, just, let's start right away. First, I want to tell you what we will be talking about tonight. There are three main things we will be covering. Number one is the Cambridge TKT core and specialist modules. We will be talking about Cambridge TKT. This will be a general overview of the exam. I know many of you are expecting me to tell you everything about Cambridge TKT tonight. And first, first thing we will do is to know about the different uh, modules, the core and specialist modules. Then we will talking on managing the teaching and learning process. 
All right, this will be uh, one of the main points in tonight's presentation. And finally, we will talk about TKT module three. We will focus on TKT module three. We will see some exam tasks. Um, also, we will see the exam format. Um, I will be launching my new online preparation course. Okay, good. Are you ready to start? Are you ready? I want you to tell me. All right, good. Good. Before we start, okay. I I want you I want you to to let me know how much you know about Cambridge TKT. Here you see on this uh, slide uh, four boxes. One says number of questions. How many questions are there in the exam? How many modules are there? What is tested in the exam? How long is the exam? All right. So before we uh, share, before I continue with my presentation, I want you to let me know how much you know about the exam. All right. We are going to start with the first activity of tonight. All right. I want you all to pay a lot of attention to this, since it is important that you have this clear to do the activity the right way. Okay. So you will be assigned a group to share what you know about Cambridge TKT module three. We are going to work in groups right now. I'm going to form, I'm going to make groups and you will be assigned a group to share all you know about Cambridge TKT module three. Before you start to share what you know about Cambridge TKT module three, you have to introduce yourself briefly to the group, to the participants in your group. All right, you will be assigned a group. So I want you to introduce yourself first and then start to share all you know about Cambridge TKT module three. You will have between four and five minutes to share with your group participants all you know about this exam, about this module. And I will notify you when time is up. So when you are about to finish, I will let you know. Spanish is not allowed in the groups. You will have to communicate in English only. All right, is this clear? I want you to let me know if everything is clear so that we start right away. Yes, teacher. Yes, all right, good. Okay, good. Let's start then, okay. Okay, good. So you will be assigned a group right now, okay? You have between four and five minutes to share. Okay, let's start right now.
Clear. No se puede. No se puede, de verdad. My sound no, is... Sí, sí, is it clear or not? Es como... Sí. Luis, Delmer, can you hear Verónica? Yes, yes. All right, Luis, are you here? Delmer, Abraham. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. First, you have, remember, you have to introduce yourself, and then very quickly, you have to start to share all you know about Cambridge TKT Module 3. Okay? Okay. Okay, good. Continue. Sí, pues ese dinamita yeah. en supervivencia se murió bien feo. Uh, Lo mató su coche. Eh, Delmer. about the techniques, the skill, and the methodology to, to teaching uh, English because uh, I, I want to, to, to give our, my students the best way to, to, to learn this language. Uh, because the English for me is very important and interesting uh, language. Um, what else? Uh, and I want to, to prepare more because I, I need to take a text or a quiz or, or an exam, international exam. And I want to have an certificate to the new level that the teacher actually need this certificate because uh, you, uh, what else? Uh, you want to prepare more uh, about to the, to the language, English language. I'm sorry. Mm. 
your microphone is mute. I think so. All right, thanks. Can you hear me now? Clear, clear. All right, good. Nothing clear. Congratulations on your work. I was checking, I was visiting the groups. I was checking that you were doing the right thing. And congratulations for, congratulations on your performance. Congratulations on your participation in the groups. Very good. Can you see my slide now? Yeah. All right, good. What's, what's 80? Why do I have the number 80 here? Is there 80 questions? 80 questions, yes, good. All right, here's another 80. 80. Right? Okay, and we have teaching knowledge also. And a number five. 80 is the time yeah. of the exam, yes? Sorry, what did you say? 80, is 80 minutes is the yes. time of the exam? Yes, it's the exam time. Yes, 80 minutes is the exam time. Yes, good. All right. Okay, good. Now I'm going to share another screen. We are going to share what we know about the exam. All right. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, teacher. All right. Okay, I'm going to type five names here. All right, good. Okay, here's my roulette. And you see my roulette? Yes. All right. Carlos, Carlos Chavez, can you hear me? Carlos, are you there? Carlos, can you hear me? All right, Carlos, I have a question for you. How many questions are there in the exam? Carlos, how many questions are there? You're typing the answer. 80, excellent. Thank you, Carlos. All right, I'm going to spin the roulette again. Abraham, so... All right, Abraham, Abraham, can you hear me? Okay, good, Abraham. How long is the exam? Abraham, how long is it the test? One hour, two hours? How many minutes? How long is the exam? Is there anybody who can help Abraham to answer this question? Two hours? No, Abraham, too much. How long is the exam? How long is the exam? Can I answer? Yes, you can. 80 minutes. 80 minutes. Excellent, thank you. 80 minutes. 80 minutes. All right, good. All right, thanks for your participation. This has been the first activity of tonight's session. All right, and you've all done a very good job. 
So we've shared in groups so far. You've been able to share what you know with me, playing with my roulette. Let's start right away with the first point of tonight's presentation. All right. How many modules are there in Cambridge TKT? Do you know? Perhaps this is something you shared in the groups. How many mo modules are there in Cambridge TKT? Does anybody know? Three. three. Uh, more than three. There are more than three. I think five modules. Yes, there are five modules. All right. Okay, yes, five. Thanks for your answers. There are five modules. There are three core modules and two specialist modules, which makes a total of five. The three core modules is what people usually call the classical TKTs or the classical TKT. The classical TKT is a test of knowledge about the principles and practice of English language teaching, and it has three modules. Yes, Luz Aurora, module one is focused on the background to language learning and teaching you might possess as a professional. This module tests your knowledge of terminology and concepts common in English language teaching. It also focuses on the factors underpinning the learning of English and knowledge of the range of functions of the choices teachers have at their disposal to cater for these learning factors. Thank you, Luz Aurora. You are very knowledgeable of the three modules. Very good, you are right. Module two is focused on lesson planning and module three, managing the teaching and learning process, which will be our main focus tonight. All right, thanks for sharing, Ms. Aurora. Module two then is on lesson planning and use of resources for language teaching. This module focuses on what teachers consider and do while planning their teaching. It also considers the linguistic and methodological reference resources that are available to guide teachers in their lesson planning. Module three is focused on managing the teaching and learning process. Tonight, we are going to cover module three. We, I will present all that has to do with module three, as well as along with my preparation course, my new preparation course for Cambridge TKT module three. If you want to prepare for Cambridge TKT module three, so you are in the right place because tonight I will tell you when you can start and what you will find in my new preparation course. The two specialist modules are TKT CLIL, which is focused on content and language integrated learning. Actually, this is what CLIL stands for. C for content, L for language, I for integrated, and L for learning. That's CLIL. And this module tests your knowledge of the aims and rationale of a CLIL approach. It covers the planning, the teaching, and ass assessment of CLIL. You know, in many different parts of the world, in many schools here in Peru and abroad, teachers are using this approach. They are doing interdisciplinary work. They are connecting subjects. They teach English through mathematics, through science, through music, arts, etc. So TKT CLIL covers the planning, the teaching and assessment of CLIL. And it also focuses on teachers' awareness of learning demands and support strategies for students in CLIL programs. The last module is TKTYL. We had a webinar on TKTYL two weeks ago when I launched my TKTYL preparation course. TKTYL is an exam for teachers and classroom assistants who want to teach English to children. For teachers working in the primary level, in kinder level. So it tests knowledge of concepts related to young learner learning and development. And knowledge of young learners from a teaching perspective, including the planning, teaching and assessment of 
children's work. If you want to know more about the, the five different modules, you can click on the link that is here at the bottom. All right. By the end of tonight's session, the same as last time and as I usually do, I will be sharing my presentation in PDF format and the recording of tonight's session will be uh, uploaded in my YouTube channel. So don't worry about taking too many notes. All right, good. Now we are going to go uh, straight to the point. What does TKT module three test? TKT module three tests candidates knowledge of teachers and learners language and classroom management. These are the two areas, the two points that are covered in TKT module three. So the, the exam mainly tests your knowledge of what happens in the classroom in terms of the language used by the teacher and the language used by the students. Also, you will be tested on your knowledge of the roles of the teacher, the different roles we can adopt or we can fulfill in the classroom, and the ways in which the teacher can manage classroom events and interactions or can exploit classroom events and interactions. What is the focus of the test? Well, First, I, 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 I'm going to tell you what the, the test doesn't test. So Cambridge TKT does not test teaching ability through teaching practice because it is a written exam. There are 80 questions. Um, the answers are, uh, the, the questions are very objective. Uh, so there are 80 questions. You will have a piece of paper to mark your answers. So. Teaching ability through teaching practice is not tested here. Nobody is going to observe your class, but you will have to show how much you know about terms, terminology, concepts, and strategies for managing your classes, for managing the teaching and learning process. Cambridge TKT does not test language proficiency. So there is no speaking in this exam. Nobody's going to, to ask you to speak. There is no listening in this exam. It is a teaching test. So all the questions have to do with teaching practices, with the, with the job, with the work we do inside the classroom. Okay, so it is not testing language proficiency. Okay, now I want to tell you how you will be assessed. All of the TKT modules, all of the five modules are taken on paper. Okay, unlike other Cambridge exams, if you are taking FCE, CAE, Cambridge preliminary, you can take these exams on paper or you can take the computer-based uh, exam. But TKT is available on paper only. And as we saw at the beginning, TKT consists of 80 questions per module. You will have 80 minutes to answer these 80 questions. And each question is worth one mark. So each correct answer, one point. There are multiple choice and matching questions. All right, who is Cambridge TKT for? Cambridge TKT is for new teachers as well as for experienced teachers. It is recommended for teachers with an English level of B1 or above because the exam is all in English and you won't be allowed to use a dictionary, for example, during the exam. So the vocabulary you will see in the exam is more or less B1, which is aligned with Cambridge Preliminary, Cambridge PET. There is no necessity to possess an international certificate. So an international diploma is not a, re a requirement but it is recommendable that you possess at least a, a, a pre-intermediate level of English to be able to take the exam. This is also good. Uh, Cambridge TKT is suitable, is ideal for teachers who teach primary, secondary, or adult learners, and teachers who want to prove their teaching knowledge. 
This is also an, an exam which is on demand for teachers who need a globally recognized certificate. All right. So TKT module three has two parts. All right. Luz Aurora, you are asking me what is tested in the Young Learners module test. Aurora, if you send me a message later, uh, I can share the link so that you access my webinar on TKTYL. It is in my YouTube channel. So you can send me a message. Luz Aurora, I send my email account in the chat box. You can send me a message. Um, I will tell you all about Cambridge TKTYL because we also have an online preparation course for TKTYL. All right, so TKT module three has two parts. Part one, as we said, is focused on teachers and learners language in the classroom. So this part of module three tests your knowledge of the functions of classroom language and how to adapt teacher language according to its audience and purpose. It also tests candidates' knowledge of the appropriacy of teachers' classroom language, how to analyze learners' language, and how to categorize learners' mistakes, learners' errors. Interesting, don't you think? All right, are you familiar with these terms? I want you to turn on your microphones or type in the chat board if you are familiar with these terms. Are you familiar with this? Modeling, prompting, nominating, discourse, explaining procedures, appropriacy of use, checking understanding, board work. Are you familiar with these terms? Are you familiar with these words? Eliciting, instructing. Uh, yes, Luis. Some of them. Some of them. All right. Would, Would you, you like to think in, during the process of the, the process of teaching? All right. Okay. Thank and you. Assessing also. Thank you, Luis. All right. Good. All right. Yes. These are things we do. These are things teachers do in the classroom. We do the things. Uh, when I tell you or when I give you examples of when we do the things in the classroom, you are going to notice and you are going to be more familiar with this. Sometimes there are many things we do, but the thing is we don't know the name of those things. We don't know the terminology. We don't know the names of the things we do. And this is why we are here tonight to share all this terminology that has to do with our work, with our uh, speciality. And right now, we are going to revise together some of these terms so that you learn about them. Do you want to learn about this tonight? Would you like to learn more about these things tonight? Of course, teacher. All right, thank you. Okay, good. Yes, teacher. Excellent. All right. I want you to take a photo of this slide or a screenshot. If you are with your phone, you can take a photo. Of your con if you are connecting with a phone, you can take a screenshot because we will need these words to complete the next activity, to complete the following activity. All right. Have you taken your photo yet? Or not I yet? Just taking my, my photo. Excellent, good. All right, I want you all to take a photo, to take a screenshot, or in case you have a very good memory, you can try to memorize all of these words because we will use them in the following activity. All right, good. Here are some definitions, some concepts. For example, deciding what you want to do with the chairs and desks in the class, thinking about 
how you want your learners to be placed in the classroom, to sit in rows, in a horseshoe, cafe style sitting around tables, in online teaching, for example. How do you organize your platform settings, the different settings of the platform? All right, what is this? Which of these things is being described here? Who has the answer? Me. All right. Organizing the classroom. Excellent. That's the answer. One point, one point for the girls. Girls always win. Deciding how you want your students to complete an activity. Do you want them to work alone, in pairs, in groups, as a whole class? In online teaching, how do you group your students? What's this? Who has the answer? Organizing the learners. Excellent, excellent. Another point for the girls. Carlos Chavez. Thanks for your answer, you were right. Organizing the learners, that's good. Asking a students questions to find out what they know and, and what they don't know about an idea or about language. What is this? When you ask your students questions. Eliciting. Eliciting, good, yes. Eliciting. Yes, we call the we call this in Spanish. Uh, in Spanish, people call it the uh, to activate the previous knowledge, right? We elicit, but in English, the word is prior knowledge, prior, not previous, but prior knowledge. This is eliciting. All right, we would we do this sometimes at the beginning of the class to know how much how a, a student knows about the topic we will be covering, perhaps. Telling learners what you want them to do in an activity. Telling learners about the things you want them to do in an activity. What's this? Instructing. Yes, instructing or giving instructions, which is the same. It's the same. Instructing, giving instructions. Excellent. Thank you, Carlos. Thanks for your answers in the chat box. All right, asking learners questions to check that they understand the meaning of language or to check that the students know what to do in an activity. What checking would that be? Checking understanding, excellent. Checking instructions, good, excellent. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Another point for the girls, by the way. All right, and what's this? Organizing your board and using the board to help learners learn. Are you good at using the board? Or you confuse the, the, the students when you use a board? That happens to me many times because my handwriting is not that good. So board. organize your board. Board this work. Board work, excellent, excellent. When learners are doing an activity on their own or in pairs, in groups, and the teacher walks around the room to look at or listen to what learners are doing, to check that they are doing the right thing and to help when needed. In online teaching, when the teacher makes sure the students are doing what expected, what is this? Monitoring. Excellent, monitoring, yes. All right, this is telling learners, telling students how they are doing. This could be checking the answers to an activity in class or providing some correction. It could also be talking to students about their progress. What's this? Giving feedback. Excellent. 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 Thanks for participating. You are doing really well. Excellent. And thanks, Carlos, for your messages in the chat box. All right. Like this together. Now let's practice together. All right. All right. Um, the here is an activity for us to practice together. Um, these questions are exam-like. I mean, the questions and the content of the questions we will have, we will cover right now. 
are the same content and a similar type to the questions of the real exam of Cambridge TKT. And I have prepared this activity based on what we have done tonight since, since we began tonight's session. At the beginning of tonight's session, I made groups. Do you remember I made groups today? In tonight's yes, session? Yes, yes, yes. Right? So I to make sure that you all had an opportunity to interact with some of the participants. How, how long were you in the groups? How much time were you working in groups tonight? I didn't calculate, I, but it for, is almost a five minutes. Five minutes, right? Five minutes. Yeah, some of you were late and you missed the, this part. But today we started with group work. We made groups here in the Zoom platform and we were working for four to five minutes together. At the beginning, I decided to make groups. And right now, you are all listening to me. You are all, you are all following me. So when I decide how I want my students to complete an activity, for example, alone, in pairs, in groups, as a whole class, what am I doing? I am? Excellent. Good. Good. You're ready to pass TKT module three. Okay, before you were group, I summarized what the group activity was going to be about in four main points to make sure you all were well informed about the activity. I told you mm -hmm. Spanish, you have to introduce yourself first, then you have to start to share all you know about Cambridge TKT Module 3. So when I tell the students what I want them to do or, or not to do in an activity, what am I doing? I am? Carlos, good. Thanks for your answer. Instructing. Instructing, giving instructions, yes. Excellent, good. You're ready to pass Cambridge TKT module three, good. When you in the groups, you were working in your groups, I decided to join the groups to make sure you were doing the right thing and to help when needed. And when I entered Veronica's group, Veronica was talking and she was making sure everyone could hear her. Then I entered another group, I, I listened to, to Anna. Uh, she was talking about the importance of the exam. So I decided to do this to make sure you were doing the right thing. In other words, what was I doing? Monitoring. Yes, I was monitoring, excellent. After you finish the activity, after you finish with the group work, I ask for volunteers to find out what you know or don't know about Cambridge TKT Module 3. When I show you a slide with a box in the middle and four boxes in each corner, uh, I ask for volunteers to let me know what uh, or how much you know about Cambridge TKT Module 3. So when teachers ask students questions to find out what they know or don't know about an idea, about a topic, about a concept or language, they are, they are? Okay. Eliciting. Eliciting, good, eliciting. And I did eliciting today when I said, okay, tell me what you know, all right. Then at some point of, of the presentation, I decided to call some of you by your names. I uh, play with my roulette, I spin the roulette, and I decided to call some of you by your names so as to give you a chance to participate and get involved with the activity. So when teachers choose and name one learner to speak or do a particular task, they are? Nominating. Nominating, and today I nominated Carlos, I nominated uh, Abraham, right? When we play the roulette. All right, here are some 
real exam practice. Okay. Here is some exam practice. This is what the real exam looks like. This is Cambridge TKT module three. And right now the focus is on the first part of module three, which is teachers and learners language in the classroom. Okay, for questions one to six, match what the teacher is doing with the purposes for using the student's first language. Sometimes teachers decide to use the student's first language. In our case, Spanish, All right? I want you to mark the correct letter. Well, to tell me the correct letter, you are not going to mark anything, but you are going to participate with me, right? Number one, the teacher is asking students to show they know what to do for homework. So why does the teacher do this? What is the reason why the teacher does this? The teacher does this for? When the teacher asks the students questions so that the students show that the motivation. Sorry? Motivating. Motivating, you sure? If you are asking a Explaining. students question, okay, what page? Okay, how many exercises? Okay, when is the time limit? You are asking checking people. understanding. You are checking understanding, yes. All right, good. In the second example, in the second case, the teacher is giving individual written feedback to a weak student. Explaining procedures, procedures. When you give feedback, when you tell a students how well or bad he or she is doing, you are telling him about his weaknesses and strengths. Explaining procedures. Actually, here you are motivating because you are giving feedback. You are telling a student, okay, a weak student, about his performance, about the way he or she has performed. So when you do this, when you come, when you approach a weak student and you tell them about the positive things or the things he or she can improve, you are motivating the student. All right, is this clear? And no teacher, because uh, for me, motivating is when you uh, encourage your students to do yes. something. Yes, and that's the word. All right, that's the word. So motivation, encouragement, these are synonyms. Yes, so giving feedback, giving individual feedback is a way to encourage, a way to motivate, because it is personalized. All right, so here you are not explaining anything. You are not explaining a procedure. You explain a procedure, for example, when you explain the rules of a game. But here you are giving personalized feedback. So this is a way to, as you said, to encourage, right? Do you agree with me? Well, it could be, well, I, I don't know too much about the TKT mm -hmm. exam, but I think that is a kind of tricky word, a tricky question, because for me, as I told you, it motivating, it's encouraging elementary students to train new ways of learning. Yes, that you are right. So motivating is encouraging. And here you are encouraging the learner by giving the learner individual feedback. All right, so it is not like feedback for all the class, but individual feedback. This is why you are motivating, you are encouraging the student. All right? Mm, okay, sure. Okay, number three. Number three is obvious. You said the magic word, encouraging elementary students to try new ways of learning. So we said the magic word, number three is obvious. The answer is? Training process. For me, the answer is C. C. Excellent. Motivating. Motivating. Yes. All right. Number four now. The teacher is telling a large group of teenagers the rules of a game. For me, it's letter B. Letter B. Explaining procedures. 
Yes, you are right. Thank you, teacher. The teacher is asking a students to translate the meaning of new words. Procedures, is that possible? The teacher is doing this for? Checking understanding. Yes, good, checking understanding. And the teacher is showing a group of beginners exactly how to use a self-access center. Activating. Um, Teacher, there could be explaining procedures. Yes, yes. It's similar to explaining the rules of a game, to tell yes, 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 yes. what to do a step by step. All right? Yes, sorry, sorry. All right, good. Here is another task. I want you to imagine this classroom situation. For questions one to six, look at the classroom activities and the teacher's instructions, A, B, and C. Choose the instruction that would come first. Imagine this is happening in the classroom. You have to read A, B, and C, and imagine which of these three things, A, B, or C, you would do first. All right? Number one says the teacher gives the students an article from a newspaper to read for the first time. What does the teacher say first? A, B, or C? When you give your students an article from a newspaper, to read for the first time. Letter B. Excellent. First, yes. your learners to read the article quickly and decide on a good title for it. All right? Mm -hmm. So that you set the context. All right? Good. Then, number two, the teacher wants to teach learners some new vocabulary connected to food. What does the teacher say first? What does the teacher do first? I, I think letter A. Correct. Letter A. Picture. Yeah, maybe. letter A. Maybe letter then you say, okay. okay, listen and repeat, biscuit, biscuit, biscuit. And then you say, can you biscuit. make a sentence using the new word, the word biscuit? All right. Number yes. The teacher. The teacher wants the students to practice language learned in the lesson by doing a role play. What does the teacher say first? Let us see. Yes. A, so you make groups, right? You are A, you are B. A, you are the interviewer. Yes. B, you are a famous person being interviewed. All right. Okay, the same. Three more questions here. The teacher wants to learn the desarrollo the oral pronunciation in discussion of it. The teacher says, Antonio, what did you group think about the question number two? Talk about, please, question in group, choose someone to report back to the front. There are some comments to make on the work, can you correct them? This is the result, the sale, and the sale. Letter B. I think letter B. Letter B. Excellent. Number five. The teacher wants to learn. A recording of a song as a listening comprehension exercise in class. What does the teacher say first? Listen and check. Listen. Letter B. Yes, first the teacher says, B. Tell yeah. me what kind of oh. song you think this is. Happy song, sad, romantic. All right, good. And number six, the teacher wants to help students with intonation patterns. The teacher says, Listen, the people checking. Letter C. I don't. Excellent. Good. Listen to these people talking. Do they sound interested or bored? All right, good. Okay, so far we've covered one of the areas of TKT module three, part one, which is focused on the teachers and the learners language in the classroom. Another area of TKT module three, part one, is categorizing learners' mistakes. 
because you know learners are always making mistakes and this is okay this is normal it is part of the learning process so we cannot see mistakes as something negative but mistakes are positive because they give us an idea of what the student's level is so mistakes are always present in our classes and it is important that we are familiar with the type of mistakes students make to be able to correct them in the right way all right here is a list of typical mistakes students make um the mistakes have been categorized so that you know what the type the specific type of mistake they are we have articles, spelling, punctuation, and verb forms. So for these questions, you have to match the underlying mistakes in a composition that the student wrote down with the types of mistakes listed. People like to live in a specale places. All right, what's the mistake in number one? Spelling. 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 Spelling of the word special, right? The spelling of the word special, good. Their own house, not live in an old house. I always think. What's the type of mistake here in number two? Z. Spelling again. All right, the spelling of the word there. It is many times confused with the possessive adjective there because it is the same pronunciation. All right, about design my own house. For better forms. They prefer to design their own house. All right. It is a composition and in it, the, each line belongs to the same composition, all right? So it's people like to live in special places. They prefer to design their own house, not live in an old house. I always think about design my own house. What's the mistake here? The verb, verb form. The verb form, because after prepositions, like after about, the form of the verb is ing form, right? After mm -hmm. of, in, about, Signing. etc., the form of the verb is ing form. So we should be familiar with the things. We should know the things because you are the teachers. So every day I have new idea. What's the mistake here? Articles. Article, the article, article. is it's a new idea. A new idea, exactly. I don't know which idea I should use. One of my ideas. Punctuation. Punctuation, yes. Instead of a comma, there should be a period there to start a new sentence, to start a new idea. All right, good. Let's continue. First of all, I would like the house to be long way from the city. What's the mistake here? To be long way. What's the type of mistake here? And two. Two. Mm -hmm. Good, we are practicing our English here. All right, you need to identify the mistake. In each underlying expression or phrase, there is a mistake. And I hope you are able to... Uh, spelling oh. teacher. Spelling? Uh. No, actually it is... Spelling? Yes. Yes, yes because it's a long way. To be, all right, and number seven from the city. I also want it, want it being big. What's the mistake right there? 
article. It. Mm, form. Actually, it is not an article. Bare form. Bare form. You say, you should say, I want it to be. Uh -huh. I want it to be, not I want it being. It be. All right? Yes. That way I can relax and to have fun. Without yeah. two. Without two. Without two. So it's bare form, right? And yes. have fun. Uh -huh. Secondly, that the design of the living room is very important. I want a big screen TV with an excellent sound system. Um, that is spelling. B. Excellent is not a well great. Wow. The spelling, the spelling, the spelling. word, excellent. Yes. All right. So the answer here is. Number nine, the answer is B, right? Let me correct this right now. Yes. It is a typing yes. mistake. Okay, just give me a Okay, that's, that wa that's why I got confused, okay. So it's B. All right. Okay, good. Thanks for your patience. Okay. Number six is article because it's to be a long way. All right. Seven, eight. Okay. Are you following me? Number nine is spelling. The spelling of the word excellent. And number 10. What's the mistake? What's missing in number 10? Article. 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 Because you should say the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. All right, you're doing such a great job tonight. All right, now we are going to focus on part two of module three. I said before that module three has two parts. Part one is focused on teachers and learners language in the classroom and part two is focused on classroom management. This part of module three tests your knowledge of the range and function of strategies available to a teacher for managing classes in ways that are appropriate to students and to teaching and learning aims. This includes a variety of activity and pace, ways of grouping learners, techniques for correcting learners' mistakes, and the roles of a teacher can fulfill at different stages of the lesson. All right, let's do this. Here are some classroom situations. Let's do this together. For each situation, two of the reasons are appropriate. All right, two of the reasons are appropriate for each activity and one of the reasons is not appropriate. I want you to identify the reason that is not appropriate. The focus now is on the way teacher corrects students and on appropriate correction strategies. So situation one, a student says the word August with poor pronunciation in open class. Which of the three, A, B, or C, would not be an appropriate correction strategy? Which of the three is not an appropriate correction strategy? I if think letter B. Letter C. Letter A. Letter, letter B. No, letter, letter C. A. Letter, letter A. A. Letter C. You know why? Because no, it has a student to say the word with no correction. So there's no point mm. to make a student repeat a word and then not correct the student, right? So saying the word correctly and ask the student to repeat it is okay. 
or to write a word in phonemic script on the whiteboard is also okay. But to ask the student to say the word again with no correction and then continue doesn't make sense, all right? Another situation, a student tells stories about themselves in groups of three. The teacher corrects a student's language, which of the three is not appropriate? A, in that case, it's A. You sure? How about C or B? C, yes. Because doing this later, um, focusing on weak students only is not the right thing to do. So the teacher correct the student's language later when she asked the weaker students to tell the stories to the whole class? No, because you know weak students are not the good ones. So we cannot ask the weaker students to perform in front of everyone and then correct them in front of everyone. All right. Here are two more situations. In a control practice exercise on the past continuous, a pre-intermediate student says, I drive in down the road when it happened. The teacher, which of these three things is, is inappropriate, is not appropriate? Letter C. I think letter B. B, yes. B, all right? Because pointing to the model sentence on the whiteboard to remind the student of the form is a good thing to do. Yeah, letter C for me to make the student see the use of the past continuous here. So using hand gestures to show that there is a missing word is also good. So the inappropriate thing to do here would be B, to make a student assume that you understood when it was wrong, so this is not right. At the start of the class, when students are talking open class, when a student says the film was interested, the teacher says interesting or interested. This is good. And letter C is also good. You were interested. So the film was, so that the student says interesting teacher. Okay. So letter B is not appropriate because maybe you can make the student feel embarrassed. If you say, okay, Maria, there's a grammar problem there. Okay, Hassan, now you tell me about your weekend. If you do this to, with the student, the student is going to feel embarrassed. Don't you think? And one more, here's the last one. Okay, here's the, the last classroom situation. In a control writing practice, practice activity, a student makes several mistakes in recently studied language. The teacher, Letter C. Yes, letter C is not appropriate. You cannot ignore a mistake when a student is making this mistake constantly. All right? So sometimes we can ignore the student's mistakes when they are maybe minor mistakes or things we can correct later. But if a student is constantly making a mistake, we have to to, to see it, we cannot ignore the mistake. All right, okay, so we've had some practical questions. Um, we've shared some practical activities so far tonight. 
Uh, thanks for following me. It's a pleasure for me to share this teaching knowledge with you all. My, my following question is, why do you think teachers might want to take Cambridge TKT? Do you consider Cambridge TKT to be an important exam? Do you think it is good for professional development maybe? What do you think? Definitely yes, teacher, because mm -hmm. I consider that as a teacher, we have to know mm -hmm. everything about it, our mm -hmm. professional career, so mm -hmm. that it means how to evaluate, how mm -hmm. to act during the process of learning. Excellent. So through this, well, I didn't know too much about that exam, as I told you, but I consider that it will be better if you have that TKT exam. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Now I'm going to, I'm going to share a poll with you. Okay, can you all see the, the window? There is a window. Yes. Okay, Cambridge TKT specialist modules, the five modules are the ideal route for professional development, help teachers consolidate teaching knowledge. I want you to mark the ones you consider to be relevant. You can mark more than one. Please, I want you all to participate. I want you every. I, I want everyone to participate. All right, there is a window. A window has appeared. I want you to answer this. Cambridge TKT specialist models. You can mark more than one. All right, I want everyone to participate. All right, good. You can mark more than one, you can choose more than one. You can choose two or three, or you can choose them all if you consider this relevant. Teacher, sorry, I have a question. Is it kind of an international exam? It is, yes. Like C, S, I, is it like that? Yes. But it's it related to the teachers? Yes, it's internationally recognized. So with a certificate of this type, you show that you are ready to teach English anywhere in the world. And the best institutions all over the world look for teachers with this certificate. Ah, okay, I see. Teacher, is it going to to test this year? Or because of the pandemic situation, it is not going to take? Where do you live? Cajamarca. Yeah, there will be there will be a center here in Chiclayo offering exams this year, following all the protocols, all the procedures. Ah, uh, teacher, you mean that uh, international exams as well? Yes. Okay. You can you can text me or you can send me email me, and I can give you all the information. I uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, You're teacher. Welcome. Okay. Good. We are going to end this. All right. This is the end of the poll. Okay, here are the results. Okay, here's what you think. So 47% of you think that Cambridge TKT specialist modules are the ideal route for professional development. But most of you think that these exams help teachers consolidate teaching knowledge. All right, good. Okay. Thank you very much for participating. All right, I'm going back to my presentation. We are coming to the end of tonight's presentation. Uh, there are a couple of slides 
I just want to share with you. Okay, so here are the reasons for think, taking Cambridge TKT. This is what we had in the poll, in the survey. One of the good things about Cambridge TKT is that there is no pass or fail. Everybody receives a certificate. All teachers taking the test receive a certificate. Okay? In the certificate, uh, Cambridge will let you know uh, through bands, through numbers one to four, how much you know about teaching issues. The idea is that you get band three or four, right? Because if your result is band one, this means that you have a limited knowledge only of the content areas tested. If you get band two, you have basic but systematic knowledge. Band three shows a breadth and depth of knowledge and band four shows extensive knowledge of content areas. So everybody receives a diploma, but the thing is you should get three or four in the exam. Teacher. All right. Okay. If some you... teacher, if some teacher take this exam, what mm -hmm. is the level to obtain? Uh, you are not given a level of English. Remember that this is not a proficiency test. Here, no. The level A, A, A1, A2, B1, B2, I don't know. Yes, again, this exam is not testing your level of proficiency in English. So I... if you do this exam, nobody is going to tell you if your English is A1, B1, B2, no. They will tell you how much you know about methodologies. You will All get right. a score. If you get a score one in the exam, this means that you have limited knowledge of methodologies. A score two is basic but systematic knowledge of methodologies. Three, breadth and depth knowledge. And four, extensive knowledge. All right, is this clear? Yes. All right, good. My question now is, would you- How like much is it? How much is it? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not talking about how much is the exam tonight. If you want to know about the cost, I can find out and then share this with you. If you text me or email me, I can give you this information. But the focus tonight is not on how much is the exam, but on what the exam is about, all right? If you want to know more in detail about some extra things about the exam, you can text me or you can email me and I will be glad to share with you all this information. All right? Okay. Right. Teacher, teacher, the exam that are going to take here in Chiclayo, it's going to be of the three modules or just module three? You can text me and I will let you know all these things later. All right? Okay, teacher. Okay, good. Okay, my question now is, would you like to take Cambridge TKT? No, yes, no, yes, teacher. teacher. All right. Now I want to tell you about preparing for an exam because you can take an exam with, with preparation or without preparation, but in your opinion, which would be better? To take the exam with or without preparation? With, definitely, with preparation. With preparation. Right? With preparation. With preparation. Excellent. What are the benefits of taking a preparation course? Number one, you get familiarized. You become familiar with the exam. Yes, of course. Uh, you have exam practice as we had tonight. Tonight we had exam practice, right? It was very practical, a very practical webinar tonight. If you prepare for an exam, you are going to have a lot of chances, a lot of opportunities for exam practice. You will have candidates comments, trainers comments that may influence the design and content of your exam. You can get feedback from your trainer. Also a preparation course is good because it gives you an indication of your strengths and your weaknesses. All right. 
And as I said before, uh, tonight I am glad to share with you my new TKT Module 3 online preparation course. Would you like to take a flexible, updated, and practical Cambridge T online preparation course? Tomorrow? Yes. Week? One day? All right, thank you. Yes, teacher, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, if you take my online course, you will be prepared for the exam. At the same time, you will be learning more about methodologies because my preparation course is focused on, on the one hand, it is focused on giving you opportunities for exam practice. But on the other hand, my preparation course is focused on the necessities of teachers and students in the classroom. So you are going to learn a lot for your classes. So you are going to be prepared for an international exam and at the same time, you are going to improve your knowledge, you are going to increase your knowledge of teaching methodologies, strategies and techniques for teaching English effectively. My preparation course is a platform for professional development. And it is also a response to the global necessity for language learning and specialist teachers. My preparation course includes downloadable materials and forums, the videos, the PDFs, everything you find, all the materials you find in my course are downloadable materials. You can save them in your computer. My preparation course includes webinars, um, all participants will be awarded a certificate of completion of 180 hours. For further information, you can contact me here. Here's my phone number, my email address. And you can keep up to date with our professional development courses via my website. I have also preparation for TKTYL. I have preparation for TKT modules one, module three right now available. And if you are preparing students for international exams, if you are preparing learners for starters, movers, flyers, CAD, PET, FCE, I also have courses, specialist courses for teachers who want to learn how to prepare students for international exams. You can find all the things in my website. All right, that would be all then for tonight. Thank you very much for your attendance, for your attention, and for sharing these teaching experiences with me. Thank, Thank you, you. teacher. Thank you, 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 teacher. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, teacher.